Hello, I'm Pam Anderson with PETA. You probably have heard of the Colonel's Secret Recipe, but you probably have no idea what goes into making a bucket of KFC chicken. Sadly, the main ingredient is cruelty. The more than 750 million chickens raised each year for KFC are treated like meat machines, not animals. They are crammed by the tens of thousands into sheds. Their throats burn as they try to breathe air filled with ammonia fumes from accumulated waste. They routinely suffer broken bones from being bred to be top-heavy from rough handling and from being shackled upside down at the slaughterhouse. Many chickens are still conscious as their throats are cut or when they are dumped into tanks of scalding hot water for feather removal. When they're killed, chickens are still babies, not yet two months old, out of a natural lifespan of 10 to 15 years. These chickens never feel the sun on their backs or the earth beneath their feet. PETA has asked KFC to make simple changes in the way that it treats its chickens, yet KFC refuses to do even the bare minimum to spare the birds the most needless suffering. Despite KFC claims, parent birds on supplier farms have their beaks chopped off soon after they're hatched. This horribly painful procedure can make eating excruciating for weeks, and the shock of it sometimes kills the birds. Cutting a beak off is not like trimming your nails. It's like having the tips of your fingers chopped off. The pain goes on for weeks and can even result in slow starvation. KFC's chickens are crammed by the tens of thousands into feces-laden sheds. The communities that they establish in nature are far, far smaller, but here in the sheds they are so large that the birds cannot establish a pecking order. This leads to a high level of stress. In fact, all their natural desires are completely frustrated in this crowded yet barren environment. Because broiler chickens are bred and drugged in order to grow at an unnatural fast pace, the birds become so fat so quickly that their bodies cannot keep up. Their hearts, lungs, and other organs find it difficult to support their massive size and can fail. Their weak legs cannot support their heavy chests, resulting in lameness. Torturing chickens is a horrible thing to do. People need to recognize that they're also living beings and they feel pain and pleasure just as we do. I'm from Alaska, and in Alaska, we care about our businesses that support our economy. The welfare of a chicken is a petty issue compared to the welfare of our economy. Money matters, and I say we agree with this Kellen. I mean, think about it, all the money we can make, and it's not like the chickens have a voice to speak out against us. Consider the following. The way the genes are changed in the chicken leads to a huge increase in the GM product development. It encourages research to continue for other animals. You're fired! Don't you speak against me! I don't work for you. In Alaska, we don't fight. We calmly discuss our issues. And personally, I think it would be great for all the citizens to follow what the government says. Miss Palin, you don't seem to understand the intellectual and scientific perspective of this issue. Can you stay out of this? Your opinion is quite unnecessary in this situation. I think genetically modifying animals is a fantastic idea. I mean, it's not only beneficial for the businesses because the chickens come cheaper, but also because the labor comes cheaper. Can we discuss this like reasonable citizens? We all need to understand that each biological species has its own identity, and we can't steal from it by genetically modifying it. Well, in Alaska, chickens are chickens. They have no identity of their own. Thank you, Ms. Keller. In the 21st century, we have to learn to be practical and care about where, where our money goes and what it does for us. We cannot afford to think about or feel it chickens. That's ridiculous. You cannot consider the chickens as human property. You guys have no heart whatsoever. Your disgusting mentality is going to transfer the future generation. Do you understand what you're starting? Because of people like you, that our economy is suffering and science isn't advanced as much as it could have. Narrow-minded and practical people like you two are holding society back. Oh snap. You see, genetically modified organisms are powerful ways of introducing desirable traits into the gene pool. However, this does not bring an influential change in the gene pool. Altering the ways of nature is not always the best idea. I need to put you in your two cents every minute. 
In Alaska, we only speak if we're sure what we're saying. Blabbering is considered rather stupid. In Canada, we act like peacekeepers. We have the freedom of speech and consider the feelings of others, even if they're chickens. Feelings, feelings, feelings. Get the heck over it. Seems like a, a great method to increase employment in our country. And I mean, if it's aiding and advances in science, why not? Right now, governments don't consider any of ethical, social, and religious issues with genetically engineered animals. See, what separates a winner from a loser is how a person reacts to each new twist of fate. You happen to be a loser because you keep considering everything that is impractical. If maybe for one second you could stop thinking about the chickens, you would be able to support this proposal and help fill pockets. The times are changing very quickly. Now there's even cows who produce human milk, and there's non-allergenic cats. Natural science is changing too quickly, and soon enough, there will be no natural science and everything will be artificial. Yes, exactly. We cannot play with the role of nature. It's just not right. Right and what's best for us isn't always the same thing. Sometimes you have to do what isn't right to get what you want. My advisors in Alaska would say the same thing. Would you like to work for Alaska? God laid down the structure of creation and any tampering with it is sinful. In Alaska, sins are not considered crimes. You would never be arrested for sinning. Look at my daughter Bristol. She done God gave me a granddaughter. Well, modification is not always sinning. Essentially, these organisms are one whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. Different sources are used and are combined into one molecule killed to create a new set of genes. The new DNA is then transferred into an organism, giving it modified or new genes. This involves insertion or deletion of genes. Who the hell cares? I'm sick of people sitting in their chairs and stating their problems. Then we roll the videotape. Then we have our experts on the topic. I'm in the what's next phase of my career. You should get your ass off the chair and go to the gym. You could use it well. Oh! And because of people like you, society is an ugly place today. Everybody is beautiful, including the chickens. Beautiful society. You should immigrate to Alaska. Thank you for your offer, but I'm fine where I am. Besides, you don't you do not seem to understand that this issue isn't only about the chickens for AFC. There's a difference between right and wrong. When you genetically modify an animal, you change the characteristic of that animal. In place of an heir, many different things can happen to the animal. There can be painful deformities, crippled, or blind. You seem to think that you're the only ones concerned about society. I happen to be governor of Alaska, and I care more about the issue than you do. Yes, it is extremely unethical. That is true. But it's stupid to push away the opportunity. Money is what matters. You're wasting my time with this. My time is precious. Have these scientists ever thought about the fact that they're playing with God when they change the characteristics of an animal? This interferes with religious beliefs. This isn't ethical. So what? If genetic modification continues, research will advance. This is great because the research can create a basis for modification in the medical field. Wouldn't it be great if scientists found a way to modify bacteria that can be resistant to viruses that are deadly to humans? That way we would benefit so much. The medical industry will thank us. Do you ever think about anyone but yourself? Horizontal gene transfer of pesticides, herbicides, or antibiotics resistant to other organisms would not only put humans at risk, but would also cause ecological imbalances, allowing previously innocuous plants to grow uncontrolled, thus promoting the spread of disease among both plants and animals. Is it right to make changes that cannot occur naturally? We cannot let these chickens suffer. Manipulating DNA is like manipulating life itself. It is unethical to modify an animal's genetic makeup for a specific purpose. This creates an alteration of the natural order of the universe. You cannot do this. I'm frustrated. In Alaska, this would have been over by now. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Can you have ethical concerns of this issue? You guys need to stop. I agree. I don't. Well, why not? I think this matter should be left to the government, i.e. Baby, we meant to be. You got me smiling all the time. Oh, baby, baby. I did it again. We want to kill the
chickens. Kill the chickens. <laughs> well, in Alaska, sins are not considered crimes, and you would never be sent. What? You'd never be arrested for sinning. Fuck. Discuss as like reasonable citizens. We all need to understand that that each biological species has its own identity, and we can't steal it. Steal it. Sorry. Nice rock. <laughs> Money is what matters. Money! 